Today, it's Ponce Around of Engine Day. There, one engine fitted. <laughs> yep, that's a two litre diesel engine out of a goddamn 65 plate Mondeo Mark V. Let me just put it on an engine stand, then I'll explain what it's doing here. So why have I got a Mark V 2 litre diesel engine in front of me? Well, rather than just give you the short answer, I may as well tell you the story. It's not actually much of a story, but it makes it more interesting. The other day I'm stood here on my phone looking at social media, doing what I do best, which is pretty much nothing, and this taxi pulls up in the yard. The door was open. And he pulls up and the engine was rattling, well the car was rattling, I couldn't tell exactly what it was to start with. But it didn't sound good when he pulled up and I'm kind of like, Jesus Christ, what the hell is this? <laughs> he, he gets out of his car, the driver does, and he starts waving his arms at me like, come here, come here. So I go over to him and he goes, on my dashboard it's telling me low oil pressure. He's a bit foreign, so he speaks a bit funny. So I had a look and he's right, yeah, it's saying low oil pressure on his dash. I lifted his bonnet and the engine is literally rattling. Like, yeah, there's something seriously wrong with this. So I switched it off. My first thing I thought was check the oil level. Maybe it's lost all its oil. So I checked the oil, it was full of oil. So I thought, oh, this is a bit strange. So I said to him, look, mate, you're going to need another car. You can't carry on with this. Go up the car sales, get yourself another car, and then I'll get a proper look at it. But it sounds like the engine's trashed. And I said to him there and then, I think your engine's scrap. There's something has gone wrong a bit big time. And he, he, he turns around and he goes to me, Well, will it be fixed this afternoon then? I, I, I thought, God almighty, you dumbass. I'm, I'm telling... No word of a lie, okay? To all taxi drivers out there, if you drive a taxi for a living, you should have at least a little insight into the, the tool you use to do your job, which is your car. You should have a little bit of knowledge of a car that you can't change an engine in an afternoon. Anyway, maybe it's just a bit off. Well, he was a bit thick, but, but regardless of that, he took the car away, it got brought back down to me and just before, just as the car was drove in the garage, just before I got the car onto the ramp, it, it was just ticking over and it just cut out. The engine just cut out dead and it was locked up solid, seized up. And I've got a hunch what's wrong with it, but I'm not going to say what's wrong with it. Because what I'm going to do with this engine I've got a lot of bits, because we've had, we had an engine, we've swapped the engine now and the job's all done, the car's gone, fixed. But, this particular engine here that's done, it's got injectors in it, high pressure fuel pump on it, it's got a load of stuff still on it, which is good, which I've got to take off. So I thought I can actually show certain things to do on this engine now, that it's out of the car, it makes it easier to look at. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down the route of replacing well, removing the high pressure fuel pump and fitting it back on properly, like timing it up and timing it up on the camshaft end. This is something I've banged on about in a few other videos, but I've never actually shown it properly on an engine. So now we can do that. Bingo! I'm going to start at the camshaft sprocket first because we've got to pin this up. We've got to set the pump timing up on these particular engines. There's a specific reason for that. You haven't got to start here first, but I'm going to, this is the way I'm going to go about it. 
And actually, what I'll do is I'm going to show you what's going to happen if you don't time the pump up properly. If these high pressure fuel pumps are not timed up properly, this possibly could happen. It's due to vibrations being transmitted from the pump through the camshaft and onto the cam belt. Now, as you see, this is our one and only case of where it's stripped a load of teeth. If you want to see the damage that caused to the engine, you can watch that here. Obviously, with the engine in the car, we've got to remove the cam belt cover, the top cover. But you've got to take your engine mount off because this bolt here is hard to get to. So if you're supporting the engine on the sump with like a trolley jack, just put some like foam pads there because it's only a plastic sump and you don't want to crack it. The wiring loom runs down like the back edge of this belt cover, which you'll probably have to unclip in a couple of places. There are three 10 mil bolts holding this top cover on. And when they're all out, you just lift the cover like forward a little bit, lift the loom up with your hand and you can pull the cover forward and it will sort of like pull out this way. 22 mil socket size on your crankshaft pulley bolt, you want to turn it clockwise. And what you're trying to achieve here, there's a little hole here, not the big one, the smaller one, and there's a small hole at the six o'clock position on the cylinder head. Now we get a six mil drill bit that will fit in that hole. So we've got to line these two holes up. So just as our hole is about to line up with the hole in the head, I'll put my drill bit there, carry on turning it over. That's it, that's gone in. Done. That is our camshaft sprocket now timed up correctly if we were going to remove and install the fuel pump. Right, that's the goddamn bullshit out of the way. Now we can get the fuel pump off. If you can imagine that this engine is still in the car, you're going to have to remove your air box and your air pipe here that goes onto your turbo pipe. You're also going to need to remove your battery and your battery tray which is going to sit here. You need to take the tray out because this bloody pipe here is going to be a problem. This is one of those pipes that no matter what you do, it's always going to be in the way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove it altogether. You can, there's a 10 mil bolt here and another 10 mil bolt down here. Remove the turbo pipe off this end. There's also a little bracket here where your clutch hose fits in. You need to unbolt and remove that bracket because the bracket gets in the way of this pipe. You can pull this pipe out and just pull it up and out the way. I'm going to remove the whole thing just to get it completely out of the way so we can see what we're doing. I'm also going to take off this top turbo pipe. You can leave this in place if you're removing the pump, but I'm going to remove it anyway just for the fact so we can see better. There's a little clip here on your breather pipe which goes onto your rocker cover. If you put a screwdriver in there you can just flick that up and it's a spring clip so we can reseal that afterwards and that hose will just, that will just pull off. Yeah. Eight mil screw. Get that out the way. There's another two eight mil screws holding this pipe onto your turbo and there'll be like a metal bracket here that the bracket isn't actually on this engine. These screws are a bit of a pain to get to. You need like a long extension bar to go in here. Preferably with a magnet on the end so you can catch the bolts because you could drop them. But once, this, once they're out, you can just pull this pipe clean off and that will come off like that. Also, with this top turbo hose out of the way, it, it makes it easier to get to this bottom one, especially this Jubilee clip, which is seven mil screw head. Now we can undo that we can pull this pipe off. Sometimes these pipes get a bit stuck. Actually, this one's come off all right, but sometimes they're stuck and you've got to wriggle them about quite a bit. There. Before we go on any further, there will be some fuel pipes here, which I've already taken these off, but I'm just going to show you. They'll be clipped in here and you unclip it. You don't disconnect the pipes here at all, okay? Leave them all, all as they are. There's another clip up here you can pull out. And all you've got to do with these fuel pipes is lift them up like that and put some padding under here so they're just lifted up in the air a bit and they'll stay up there. 
the two plug connectors that go to your thermostat housing, unplug them and unclip them where they're clipped into this metal bracket, then just move that wiring loom out of the way. Three eight mil screws holding this bracket over your brake vacuum pump. Okay, we get that off. One more wiring connector clipped into this metal bracket up the back of your pump. You have to try and get that off. I'm not sure whether this is some kind of insulation or sound deadening material. It's quite thick, foamy material. But anyway, what the hell, it, co it covers your pump. Now we can get it out of the way. There's a heater hose here, which has got like a plastic clip on it. You have to try and prise the, the little tab at the back and then the hose will pull out. There, that's it. You need to get that hose out of that bracket. The bracket can get, we can get the bracket off now, but it's easier to do the bracket once we've got the pump off. The plug connector that goes onto your fuel meter in valve, it's like covered over by a metal bracket. All I do is slide a screwdriver in there and you can get to the little tab of the actual plug connector, flick the tab and then the plug connector will just pull off. And you can pull it out the back of that bracket and just move it out of the way. A little bit of the wiring loom is clipped onto this bracket as well. So you just have to flick that off like that. Okay, this bracket is held on by three 8mm screws. One of them at the front, which is nice and easy to get to. So that's, that's that one. The other two around the back of the pump, which are not so nice to get to. They're, they're a little bit fiddly to say the least, especially this bottom one. There's like a dowel on this bracket which goes into your pump as well, just there. So that, but anyway, the whole thing will just pull off and you can wriggle it out of the way. Right then, two fuel pipes, they're different diameters so you can't get them wrong. A little tab inside this clip here, you pull out like that, okay? Then you push the whole tab in and then the pipe should pull off like so. There, flipping it. And be prepared for some fuel spillage. Yeah, there we go. It's up to you how you tie these pipes out of the way. The fuel leak off pipe here has like a little green tab on it. I wouldn't pull the outer bits of the tab because they'll probably snap. I suggest getting it right in the bottom, at the base and pushing it out, then the tab will come out. I'm sorry that these little tabs here that you'd think you'd pull with your fingers, they're very weak and they snap. Using a screwdriver, you can pry that leak off pipe very gently now and it should pull out of your pump like that. 17 mil spanner. This is your high pressure fuel line going from your pump to your fuel rail. So we'll crack that undone. Normally they'll just spin off finger tight. And then we can just leave that there. There's three bolts holding this pump on now. You've got one there, well, one bolt there, a nut at the bottom there, and another bolt at the bottom. So I'll get this top one out first. Chances are the bottom bolts on these pumps are gonna be covered in oil, and you're gonna get your hands covered in it. So I would advise wearing gloves. Last but least, we'll get that 13 mil nut off. Dirty, yeah. That's it, there's nothing else holding the pump on. We should be able to just grab a hold of it, just give it a little wriggle. Well, there you go. That's just popped out like a good one. Right, I just want to check something here. I might wipe that. There's our little mark. There's our dot on the pump. And if I bring my screwdriver along from that dot, it's lined up perfectly with this dot. And that's how it should be. Them two dots have got to line up with each other. That's how it come off the car. Absolutely perfect. So for argument's sake, if them dots didn't line up, if that dot was over here, you'd have to put a spanner on this and it tells you 
it tells you you can turn it anti-clockwise and you'll turn it until both dots line up. So if you ever got one of these pumps off, just remember that sprocket has got to be, it's really tight to turn. If it turns easily, the spring is like a, like a valve spring in here, that'll be broken. If you're fitting a new one of these pumps or you just had this pump off for any other reason, you're probably best replacing this rubber o-ring. Anyway, that's my dots lined up again. Before I bolt this pump back onto this engine, there's this intermediate housing here with a cog inside it. And the cog on the pump dogs into the cog that's in here. And the cog that's in here has got like a dog drive on it which goes onto your uh, exhaust camshaft, which your camshaft drives the pump. There's oil leaks on these cars. They, they leak from this housing. It, there's a gasket at the back of this housing. You have to take the housing off. It's like three or four 13 mil bolts. And they're just a bad, bad design. They're forever leaking. If you want to know a little bit more about that housing and the oil leak on it, I banged on about it in a video here. In fact, I've banged on so much about these fuel pumps in the past in various videos. I've bored myself now, so I'm not going to talk about it no more. In fact, this is going to be the last video I'm ever going to talk about these pumps. Okay, as everything's lined up, that pump will slide onto the stud and then straight in. You'll just give it a little rock, bang, <coughs> that's it. That's just popped straight on. Stick your three bolts back into place. There, nice and tight. Make sure your high pressure pipe union is actually in the hole and you can put your nut on. That should spin on pretty much finger tight. That's it. Pop your leak off pipe back in, press that in and then push the tab it back down. Fuel pipes are pretty straightforward. Just push them on and then just clip the little tabs back into place. You would then fit this bracket onto the back of the pump like that. And then you'd get your wiring plug and plug this connector back into your fuel metering valve, like so. Then stick your heater hose back in its bracket and pop the clip down. Bingo. And that's it. You'll just refit the rest of the components in reverse order. Put your battery and battery tray back in, put your air box back in. On your camshaft sprocket end, just remove your timing pin, well, <laughs> drill bit. Put your top cover back on, refit your engine mount. Right then, when everything is back together, I would say replace the fuel filter anyway. You haven't really got to do anything special to this. If you've got a diagnostic tool, it's probably best to plug it in and just reset your high pressure fuel system. It just helps a little bit. It doesn't really matter that much because if you get in the car and drive it, the ECU will learn itself anyway. The other thing is, you haven't got to bleed the fuel system. You've got an in-tank fuel pump, which will push the fuel around the system anyway. So in the space of a few revolutions, the engine is going to fire up regardless. So don't worry about having to bleed the fuel system. You haven't got to do it. It should start up perfectly fine. And that's about, <laughs> that's about it. But I'm just wanting to point out in this video, it's important to actually time up this high pressure fuel pump on the camshaft end as well, well on the crank sprocket, the camshaft sprocket end, because like I said at the very beginning of the video, if it's not timed up right, the vibrations from that pump can transmit down and damage your cam belt. <laughs> Do you know what? The irony, I don't know if that's the right word or not, while I was making this video on this engine, we had a Ford Transit here connect having brake pipes fitted. Since that van has left, another car has been pushed in, which I've been working on, because I've been sort of like making this engine video sort of like in between other things. And this taxi that sits here has kind of got a similar problem. Come and have a look. The car was being driven and it just cut out on the driver. Oh dear, oh dear. 
we do seem to have a broken timing chain. I can tell you for now, this is a completely new problem that I've had. Because whereas in the past, when I was just saying about the other engine, you can get the cam belts to strip, the cam belt was absolutely perfect on this. In fact, the cam sprocket where it sat here, when I pinned up the crankshaft, the camshaft sprocket here was pinned up perfectly. So I know that this exhaust camshaft is absolutely timed up as it should be. But the chain has snapped. And what I'm kind of guessing here is just here, the tensioner, the plastic guide, I reckon the chain has got, has got slack and been slapping around. It's broken the guide and I reckon the chain has got snagged on this metal part of this tensioner and that's what's broke it. So I reckon when I remove that cam cover, we're gonna have a whole bunch of broken rockers on the inlet camshaft and the exhaust camshaft that was still timed up perfectly are gonna be fine. In fact, what I'll do is I'll pop this cover off now and have a look. But I'm, yeah, I'm putting this down to the fact the chain was just, for some reason, it's got slack. The car has done 216,000 miles. So it's quite possible the chain's failed and just got, got a little bit loose. And that's what's caused this problem. There again, the last one I'd done of these where I had a loose chain, and it's, this is not the first time, the driver came in and said, I've got a noise from my engine. And you could hear the chain rattling. Obviously this driver, if this is the case, hasn't said nothing, he's carried on driving with a noisy timing chain. Normally when the chains get noisy on these cars, you can hear them, but there again, some drivers can't hear jack. <laughs> okay, get in there. Trouble with these covers, they can get stuck down quite well. Well, that's gone. Okay, here we go. What I'll do, I'll just remove this inlet camshaft to start with. And I'll take this back one out. There. That actually looks okay. Hold up. There's some bits of metal in here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's part of the chain, obviously. And I'm kind of guessing this piece of bent bracket metal here is uh, part of the tensioner. Okay, I've just inspected all eight rockers on this uh, inlet side, inlet camshaft rockers. And they're all absolutely perfect, because normally if the belt breaks or something like that, they'll crack the rockers here and, and they'll, just, they'll just bend in half and that saves your valves. But these are all perfect, all of them. I even checked the exhaust ones, which were timed up perfectly anyway, knowing the exhaust is gonna be fine. But how lucky is that? Flipping heck. It seems I've got away just with a chain. So yeah, I'm not really finding anything else wrong with this. I reckon, I mean, see this tensioner, there should be a plastic guide here at the top. And also at the bottom where the plunger is, that's obviously where this bracket comes from. That bracket's like gnarled, it should go onto there, it should press onto there. And there should be another guide here, plastic guide. I reckon the plastic guide, the chain's got slack. It's broken off both plastic guides. And then, because this is like this bit here, it's actually been like snagged where the chain's been hitting it. So I'm pretty sure the chain has snagged on this metal part of the tensioner and that's what's broke the chain. And then bang, that's it, the engine's cut out. While I'm here, just out of sheer interest, because this chain was loose, I'm just wondering if this flipping tensioner, if something's gone wrong inside it. Let me pull this plunger out. Come on, there's a lot of oil in it. Let's see if I can just pick this out. There's a spring in here. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 
that's broke. The spring's broke. That's not good. So I'm, I'm kind of assuming now that the broken spring inside this flipping tensioner has broke and caused the tensioner to be weak. And that's what's bloody made the chain loose. Mind you, even if the driver had have noticed the rattling timing chain, it would have still been the same result. I would have still had to have taken the rocker cover off, the camshaft cover. It's a lot of work and it's not a cheap one either. The actual timing chain on these alone is like a hundred quid. And I forget the price of the tensioner, but that's not cheap. Plus all the gaskets involved. Mm, it's quite a bit to do. You'll know what I'm going to be doing for the next day and a half. <laughs> anyway. I can't do nothing at the minute. I'm waiting for parts. I'm going to take a break. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Let's go and see Monica. Yeah, it's been a long old morning. We have to say hello to Mrs. Monica. A video wouldn't be a video without Mrs. Monica in it. In fact, Mary, Mary is off. Look, the chair's empty. She still hasn't fixed her computer, but she's off on holiday somewhere. Oh my God, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You're overexposed by about a thousand stops. Great. Let's bring this into focus. There we go. Mrs. Monica. Yes, hello. It's a lovely sunny day outside. I know, it's so warm, so warm. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Right. Because all the people on YouTube might be interested in this. Mm. You've booked a holiday, haven't you? Well, I did, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna go. You, you, what, you've got to clear it with the Chinese Communist Party first. It's not Chinese. <laughs> no, for, for everybody's information, if this does happen, you are going to a country on the other side of the planet for a holiday. Correct. Where is this country? South Korea, Seoul and Busan. Well, now I, I would say to that, South Korea wouldn't be my first choice in a holiday destination. My, right. my, it would be Taiwan, you know, countries like that. I, I was due to go to the Philippines, which is all cancelled. Well, you never know, maybe mine will be cancelled as well. Vietnam's another, another one a lot of people go to. Why, why, is it, why is it about South Korea? I don't know, it fascinates me, the culture, language, food. I will say this, it's apparently one of the safest countries in the world as far as I know. Yeah, it is. I've been there before. Yeah. Well, so when, when you get back, you're going to bring us all some holiday pics and you can show us. In, sure. fact, in fact, we can put all your holiday pics of, the, uh, of South Korea on one of our videos. Well, I think I'll be creating videos as well as I go along. Okay. Well, you can pass them over and we'll share yeah. them. Sounds good. If I'll go. <laughs> if well, I'll go. well, well. At the moment, nothing certain, is it? Because we're sort of like anything could be cancelled at the moment. Well, we it's don't. in November, but apparently it's meant to be second wave, so who knows? Yeah. Oh well. Well, let's let's hope let's hope everything clears up and we can all get back to normal and all carry on as we were and put all this behind us. Yeah, definitely. Especially on the November the seventh. <laughs> Why? What's happening November the seventh? That's my departure. Oh. <laughs> oh, you've got a while then. You might be alright by November. I wanted to get away by August, but nothing else going to happen. No, I think you can maybe go around here from July, but not abroad. Anyway. Wow, I like an outfit. Thank you. That's, that's pretty, pretty bling. Mm. In fact, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Let me brighten it up a little bit. Yeah, that's better. I like that. Where'd you get that outfit from? Uh, I have no idea. We'll have to check the label. <laughs> <laughs> not TK Maxx. Mm, Next? No, no, probably not. I don't know. Well, it's, it's very nice. Thank you. Anyway, I'm going to get on. I've, right. got, I've got more broken bloody taxis to fix. 
Well, I've got more other issues. <laughs> I see you've got a checkbook in your hand. Yeah, would you, you like one? Yes, please. A blank one. <laughs> 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 see you later. Bye. Yeah, that broke the morning up. But I am, I am actually really surprised that taxi over there, how it didn't break a single rocker. Because I would have thought that one camshaft that wasn't that's sort of like, well, you know what I mean, that, that one camshaft that's, that wasn't being turned, it must have just stopped just in the right position not to break any of the rockers. Because the last one, on the video I put a link to up in here earlier on, that's 16 broken rockers where the cam belt went, where the cam belt got stripped. And this isn't far off, really, broken chain. That's the, by the way, that's the first broken chain we've ever had. But the mileage on some of these cars are getting quite a lot now, so I'm kind of thinking we're going to see, be seeing a bit more of this. But anyway, that's it. That's today's video over with. We shall say bye-bye till the next time. See ya!